ready? Is there a delay on it? Is it that camera? All right, I think we may be live. It's our first time, forgive us. We're trying to get there. There we go. All right, Naughty Nation, so good to see you again. Welcome to our first, our, our inaugural live. We'll be doing this every Thursday at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. So please join us. Uh, we've got Corey in the shop. We've got a brand new shop, brand new studio. Um, we're excited. We're ready to go. Um, give us a thumbs up. Give us a chat. If you can't hear us, if anything's wrong, uh, just let us know. You want to get that sound for me? Um, today we're going to talk about how to take a... Uh, epoxy project that you might have done in the past that's taken a bit of a beating maybe it's got some knife marks on it some scuff marks in our case these two uh, tables have been left in our shop any flat surface left out there will immediately become something fair game to set your dirty glue rags on or used epoxy or those kind of things so uh, we got a bunch of overspray from some, some spray painting we've been doing on our paint guns that kind of stuff so they took a, ha a beating. We want to clean them up and make them look like brand new again. So um, I brought them in here. I thought it'd be a good first project to go over um, how easy it is to take uh, epoxy that's been worn, beaten on, and bring it back to new. It could be your uh, countertops that you're trying to be doing. It could be your flooring. Um, whatever epoxy you've done, it could be an old river table that you're trying to bring back to life. These same techniques will help you uh, bring these back to just like new. So. Real quickly, we're gonna take a look at this. Corey, you ready? All right, awesome. Um, I've got this one's prepped. I'm gonna show you on this table right here um, what we're working with. Can you get this table in there? Okay, let's come on in here then. I need to look at this table right here. We're having some technical difficulties. Please bear with us. All right. Maybe uh, just use the camera that's working for now, since we're live. All right, this will be a short video anyways, so it's a learning experience for both of us. Hang in there, thanks for watching. All right, so uh, this table right here is the one we're working on. Corey's gonna bring you over here real carefully and zoom in, tell me when you're ready. All right, as you can see, I've got a bunch of old wood glue on here. Um, it's scuffed up, it's beat up. I've also got a top coat on here um, and when you're uh, going to re-pour an epoxy pour, you want to make sure you remove the top coat all the way as well. So we've got our liquid rock product on here. It's really, really durable. Helps, uh, helps it uh, so that we can get the sheen level we want. Liquid rock comes in a high gloss, a satin, or a matte. Uh, in the old days, I used to have to sand the heck out of my epoxy and then bring it up to the sheen level I want. It was a lot of work. It took me a lot of time. Slowed down the process. But with liquid rock, we're able to just sand out the impurities the first time with a 220 grit and then roll it on and get a nice beautiful uh, finish every time that's what we do so in this case um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a sander with 220 grit on it and we're going to remove some top coat i'm just going to remove a small section so that you can see what it uh what it needs to look like so prepare your ears it's going to be loud in here for just a second <laughs> Right. 
Hey, will you hand me those uh, paper towels right there, please, Corey? Right there. Thank you, sir. All right. So I'm going to give this a quick wipe. So if you can look right here, you can see the edge of the top coat where it's been sanded away. And then I've got this smooth, uh, cloudy-like surface on top. That's what you want to get down to. It's going to look like you've uh, wrecked your epoxy that's all cloudy and you're, you're not going to get it back. But trust me, it's going to come back and it's come back beautifully. Um, so you want to make sure you sand your entire surface of that. I'm going to save you the, uh, the experience of having me sand this whole thing down and get it just right. Um, I just use an, uh, a uh, hand palm sander with 220 grit. One thing I do want to show you is when you get to the edges, um, you don't want to hit it with your uh, hand sander because it will, or your palm sander really will grind out these edges. They're, they're delicate. So I use a foam sander with 220 grit on, and you'll just, you know, apply just enough pressure back and forth. Take your time to get the uh, top coat off like that. And then you can see there's a couple spots right there I'd continue work. But all of your edges, you're going to want to make sure you do by hand so that you don't burn through the epoxy and show your substrate underneath because um, that's a, a different set of problems that you'll, you'll run across if you get there. Let's say you do do that. Um, what I'd recommend is continuing to sand it all the way around. And wherever the substrate is, hit it with like a little spray paint. In this, in this instance, it's dark, so I'd use a, uh, like a black or a little um, nail polish to rub on the substrate that's exposed. That, so you hide it again, so if this were MDF, MDF would really stick through um, the top of this and uh, go from there. Matter of fact, this table was a, a rescue from a, a, a restaurant that was being thrown out. It was full of uh, stains and all that stuff. I'll refinish this one, we'll show it in uh, next week's video as well. Um, but once you're all done and sanded, you'll end up with a product that looks like this. As you can see, I've got a nice uh, cloudy surface on this and uh, I've sanded the edges in the top so that it's ready to go. So I'm just gonna take a uh, paper towel, make sure I've got any of that extra dust that might have been on there uh, off my surface. So I'm gonna pull that just like that. We'll clean it. Now this is a circle and I went ahead and posted a link in our description on how to figure out the area of a circle. This is a little over two and a half uh, feet across. I just rounded up to three, typed in the uh, area of a uh, of a how to find the area of a circle found out that this is seven square feet the actual uh, formula is something like uh, pi r squared or something like that anyways the easiest way is to use the calculator type in your stuff and it'll spit it back out so i got seven square feet here um, with our epoxy we want to go three ounces per square foot so i want to go 21 uh, ounces at a minimum here i actually like to go a little bit over um, at times just to be to be ready for it so i'm going to glove up and we're gonna mix up this epoxy here and I'll show you how we, how we bring this thing right back to new. Put this on real quick. All right, I like these TCP Global Cups. Um, I'm using a contractor grade epoxy. It dries quicker, still has a long working time, 45 minutes plus. But once it uh, starts kicking off and curing, full cure times seven days, you can be putting it in a customer's house two and a half, three days later. Um, the only thing that's uh, a little bit different is a two to one mix ratio. Part of why I like these uh, TCP cups is here's my one to one ratio, but if I come here right to two to one, um, I can see there's a number here, a five and a five. So if I fill up to this five and this five, that's my two to one ratio. If I come across here, that's gonna give me approximately 24 ounces on my cup. I need at least 21, so I'm gonna use that number as my, my guide. So I'm gonna start out here, go over to my two to one section. I'm gonna pour my A. And this is just a clear epoxy. We're trying to bring this back to life, so I'm not gonna tint it or anything like that. I'm not trying to hide the effect. Uh, uh, I'm scuffing it up so that I can um, bring it back to brand, like just like the day it was poured. I poured this with Marcy, a mixed media girl. It's actually an acrylic pour underneath. Um, I'm gonna jazz it up a little. For anybody who knows me knows I like a little Vegas sizzle. So that's what this is. And we're gonna drop it in there to give us a little sparkle. I like this brand of epoxy um, because it does mix easily. It's not thick. It doesn't encapsulate a bunch of uh, bubbles and those kind of things. It also has a bubble release in the formula so I don't have to torch this. 
Um, if you want to, I know a lot of people who have uh, cut their teeth on other brands have, are used to torching the heck out of it. Uh, if it makes you feel better, just do a light pass right at the end. It'll kill any micro bubbles, but they come right out anyways. It's also uh, blends a lot easier. There's a little purple hue to the part A, and when you mix the two together, um, it comes to a clear. Uh, also, when I sanded this, the 220 uh, roughs it up enough so that the epoxy has something to bite onto and gives me a mechanical uh, bind with the, the layer beneath it so that we don't have any delamination in the, uh, in the future. So I'm just gonna mix this up a little bit uh, by hand to get it ready. So I'm gonna throw in my Vegas sizzle at this point. This stuff a little bit goes a long way. I recently did a floor job, a 4, 000, little over 4,000 square foot restaurant and this is how much of it we've used to put some sparkle into the floor. So a little bit goes a whole long way. So I'm just gonna take just that much, and I'll put it in there, and that's gonna be plenty for what we're after. Stick that there, mix that in. My Vegas sizzles in there now. Give it a good mix so I don't have any clumps of it. And I'm gonna go. Along with uh, prepping this table, along the edges, I've taped it up so that there's actually a stainless steel uh, banding around the side of it that we cleaned up to make sure that uh, we don't uh, have epoxy on that that we have to peel off later. So I just threw some of that on. And I'm going to stick this right here on this table, which we're about to pour. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to pour it right in the middle. Real, just like that. I'm going to let it flow. Got a nice layer on there. Set that to the side, put my stick on it. I actually love to use my hands. So we're just gonna take this and spread it out there. And when I'm using my hands, I'm, the epoxy will self-level, so I don't wanna push it over the edges at first. I just wanna spread it out and get it out to um, the edges before I push it over so I make sure I've got a good, nice, even distribution of uh, the epoxy that we're about to use so that I can level nice and gently there. You can see those colors are coming right back to life. And I'm coming up right to my edges now. So starting out, I'm not trying to push it off. Um, I've got it here. We've got a nice temperature uh, in this room. We're right at uh, 73 degrees. Uh, so this is actually going to level just right and fire off. That's right about um, the sides. Now that I've hit the sides, I'm going to get a little on my hands. I'm going to rub all around the edges. I want to make sure every, uh, every bit of it is covered with uh, some epoxy so that it will flow over the edge um, and not have any surface tension that it has to fight against. And as you can see, as it comes out and thins, we're getting a brand new, beautiful surface out of this. And if you look closely, there's our famous Vegas sizzle in there. Just like that. I'm going to squeeze that there. Um, as you can see, it leveled out, back to brand new. This thing will dry out and level. We'll have a beautiful uh, renewed surface, as you can see here. Um, from there, we'll throw on our top coat and be ready to rock and roll. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, live video. Uh, if you have any questions, drop it below. We try and answer them all individually. Like I said, we're going to be doing this every Thursday starting, uh, starting this week, but every Thursday at 5.30 p.m. And Oh, we also have some other great news. We're starting our classes back up. Pandemic has uh, got to the point where here in Nevada, we're able to bring people into Las Vegas, hold classes again. So if you want to come to the absolute best epoxy training in the nation, come and visit us here. We can teach you countertops. We can teach you flooring. We've got really cool river table projects that we do. We've recently brought in uh, Make Your Own Surfboard that's made with epoxy and skateboards. We've got some other really cool things and tumblers are coming down the road. Uh, classes are getting really, really fun. Um, and I hope to see you here. We're starting back up in October and we'll be having them every four to six weeks from there. So uh, hit me up if you need anything else, and until then, have a great day.